for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line To my man Sammy got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is the time Listen to the Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> You're in the ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Le Canadien, ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le match troisième de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La TV. Embrace your true nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. It's gonna be sick. What is going on, Montreal, Montreal Canadians fans and hockey fans all over the world? I am Marinero on this Wednesday, February 22nd. It is three minutes past 10 p.m. in just a couple of hours. My eldest turns 20, and even though it's not official yet, a couple of hours to go. Anthony, let me be the first one to actually wish you a very, very happy birthday. I love you, bud. The Sick Podcast brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group, a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America. They are driven to be different and brewed in Quebec and winner of a dozen international awards. How about La Bit A TB? They, too, bring you the Sick Podcast, offering quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for Everyone's taste, La Bitta TB, embrace your true nature, and brought to you in part by Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, that was back in 1993. That's a long, long time. It's time you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. And as I told you, I was there twice last week at uh, Lacage Centre Belle on Friday prior to WWE SmackDown and on Saturday prior to WWE's Elimination Chamber. And special thanks to assistant manager. Kevin Baudry for taking care of me and my reservation and uh, just giving me uh, incredible customer service the way he does all the time. Oh, look at that. Uh, Kelly wishes uh, Anthony a happy birthday as well. It's it's not right now, okay? It's February 23rd, so we're a couple of hours away, but thank you very much for that. And uh, I probably shouldn't have said it because I'm going to wish him a happy birthday again on tomorrow night's show. Uh, but anyway. Uh, that's okay because it's my show and I guess I can do whatever I want, which is the beauty of podcasting. You know, you're, you're uncensored. You can pretty much do what you want, but you can't do what you want. You know what I mean? I mean, at the end of the day, you have sponsors, so you have to be very, very careful what you say because uh, one wrong thing and uh, it's, that's not good. So, uh, you know, but at the same time, we have great partners who allow me to be myself and say whatever I want pretty much uh, because they trust what I'm going to say. Right. Uh, and, uh, so that's pretty cool. If you're watching on YouTube live, thank you. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook live, thank you. If you're watching on Twitter live, thank you. And if you're watching on Twitter or on Facebook, but you ha- you're not watching on YouTube because you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is growing every day. It was like just yesterday where it seemed like we were at a thousand subscribers and now we're just shy of 12,000. And hopefully within a year from now, that 12 doubles to 24. And hopefully a year after that, that 24 goes to 50 and we double and then we double every other year that would be nice if we triple or quadruple that would be even better it's a night off for the montreal canadians and tomorrow night's going to be a night off as well the canadians are going to be back in action on friday night when they visit the flyers in philadelphia and then on saturday uh they're going to be back at the at the bell center and uh, of course they are going to um they're going to host the uh ottawa senators i want to take a look at the rest of the schedule though so uh Finishing off the month of February, on Tuesday, the Canadians are going to be at San Jose, by the way. And uh, then they go, that's going to be the first of the four games on the West Coast road trip, of course, that will see the Canadians also going to Los Angeles, Anaheim, and to Vegas. Uh, My God, the Canadians are going to play in Boston on the 23rd of March. And I don't remember when was the last time they played in Boston. And it's just, it's... uh, They played the Bruins, of course, we know, uh, back in the third week of January, and the Canadians lost by a score of 4-2. to But uh, I remember when the Canadians used to play the Boston Bruins many, many times, and that was so great for the rivalry. 
And now, you know, they just, they play them a couple of times and it's not so great for the rivalry. As a matter of fact, personally, I think it sucks. You know, the whole, uh, yeah, but you have to play every team once this, that, whatever. I, you know, I, I don't know who, who said that you got to play every team once. Oh yeah. Because fans in the national hockey league want to have a chance at least to see, you know, some, you know, the best player from every team enter their building once or this and that I want rivalries in hockey. That's what I want. I want rivalries. I want storylines, right? The WWE, I brought it up before, right? It's 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 the best, uh, you know, it, for us men, uh, it's the best soap opera you can get, right? Story after story after story, and the stories are, some are better than the others, with the bloodline being one of the best stories ever in the history of the WWE. And there's stories and there's rivalries, right? And that's what keeps the WWE going. And the National Hockey League has stories. I mean, stories are being created and they're being written every day, whether it's uh, someone achieving a milestone or yesterday it was Connor McDavid getting point number 800 and then Dreisaitl getting point number 700. But those rivalries, they're, they're, they're nowhere near where they used to be. And that's why the numbers for the National Hockey League in the United States, they're not great. And there's a lot of room for improvement. The Canadians and the Nordiques will never see another rivalry like that again, very unfortunately, unless, of course, the Nordiques come back, which I hope they do. But even if they don't, it'll be difficult to match the rivalry that they used to have in the 80s um, and in the 90s, particularly because of Le Tigre, Michel Bergeron. That was an amazing rivalry. The Canadians and the Bruins, that was an amazing rivalry. The Rangers and the Islanders, that was an amazing rivalry. The Penguins and the Flyers, that was an amazing rivalry. The Flames and the Oilers, that was an amazing rivalry. The Avalanche and the Red Wings, that was an amazing rivalry. Now, I don't know, rivalry, what rivalry? I don't know. I don't even think there's any rivalries anymore in the National Hockey League. That kind of bothers me, but anyway. Uh, Mapper, Marc-André Perrault is uh, going to join us very, very shortly, as he usually does. He's a contributor on Wednesday nights. Um, but And so we'll get to him in just a couple of minutes. But, uh, you know, I want to make an announcement, and we made it on social media uh, probably a couple of hours ago, and hopefully you all follow um, the Sick Podcasts, which brings you this Sick Podcast Monday to Friday, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, and it goes for at least an hour. Well, there is another Twitter handle that I'd like for you to follow, and it is Sick Pod C F M T L. The Sick Podcast C F Montreal Talk Montreal there with the accent um, is officially born, and I've been saying over the last little while, mostly on radio where I make my appearances um, on Jean-Charles Premier Contour Show on BPM Sports, 91.9 on your FM dial, Quebec's number one all sports radio station. I've been saying for a while that I believe that members of the media talk too much or the Quebec members of the media talk too much Montreal Canadians. I'm okay for new stories. Stu Cowan talking to Michael Matheson's dad. That's a great story. Eric Engels revisiting with Jeff Gordon one year later on the modernization of the Montreal Canadiens. That's a great story. Talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois every day for a month and a half when he's under contract with another team for at least another six months, maybe even another year and a half. I find that's a little bit too much. Talking about trading Jonathan Drouin or... Sean Monahan or Evgeny Dadanov every day for three or four months, I think that's a little bit too much, right? Is Montembeau the number one or is it Allen every day for the last two months? I think that's a little bit too much, right? Uh, Caulfield's next contract every day for like three months, I think that's a little bit too much. And I think when you talk about the same topics all the time, um, the novelty wears off. I think I think people at that point say, you know what, give me something fresh. 
We try to give you stuff that's fresh on the sick podcast every night here. We're not perfect. We know that we talk about some of the stories that are talked about earlier in the day. Sometimes there's more stories than others. Uh, we try our best to be creative. But if I'm going to say that I don't think there's enough CF Montreal talk, well, then I'm going to have to do something about it. And the sick podcast is going to have to do something about it. And um, so we decided to do something about it. So, you know, when we talked soccer on this podcast, uh, we realized that when we were talking soccer on this podcast, that still many of you in the chat on YouTube or whatever were still talking hockey. So I'm talking soccer and you're still talking hockey. And, you know, we realized that, you know, the reason why you came here is because it was going to be a hockey podcast or maybe so you thought at the beginning. So that's what you were used to. And we also take a look at where the market is. And right now streaming, it's on demand, right? You want to watch a hockey podcast, you watch a hockey podcast. You want to watch a Montreal Canadiens podcast, you watch a Montreal Canadiens podcast. And so if you want to watch a CF Montreal podcast, we're going to give you a CF Montreal podcast. So we're going to try and make this as much as we can, a Montreal Canadiens podcast, as much as we can. Uh, I mean, every now and then, like in the last couple of weeks, we had a chance to speak with Raquel Rodriguez and Sami Zayn of the WWE. So we slotted them in here uh, and that's okay. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. And, and then you know what? Who knows? Maybe at one point, we're going to give you a podcast that's going to be anything but Canadians. So we'll give you the Canadians at night and maybe during the day, we'll give you anything but Canadians. So we'll start with CF Montreal. We'll do it at least two times a week. And if we find that there's a need to talk about, you know, the Montreal Alouettes, and because we will talk about the Alouettes from time to time, we'll talk about Quebec porn athletes, we'll talk about amateur sports if we have to. At one point, it may transition or may become an anything but Canadians podcast in the day and this Montreal Canadians podcast at night. Um, Tony, you're going to lose listeners if you trash your audience. I didn't trash my audience at all. I said, what we noticed was when we were talking soccer, the couple of days that we were here on the podcast, everyone in the chat was still talking hockey. So what we decided to do was open up a CF Montreal talk podcast and episode number one drops tomorrow. We're going to go a minimum of two times per week. That's the plan is to go two times per week per week. The reason why I said minimum I mean, let's face it, if in the, uh, let's just say we drop every Thursday and we drop every Monday, okay? So CF Montreal during their season, they're going to play their games on Wednesday nights and they're going to play their games on Saturday nights, okay? So we'll probably drop on, uh, we'll upload a podcast on Monday and we'll upload a podcast on Thursday. Now, if they happen to make some kind of big trade in between or whatever or something crazy happens, You know, at that point, what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to, um, uh, you know, we're going to add, we're going to add another episode. Okay. And uh, I'm very, very happy to have alongside me in this venture, uh, Jeremy Filosa of 98.5, who, in my opinion, when it comes to reporting on CF Montreal, is number one in the city. Number one. I'm not just saying that because he's a friend of mine. Jeremy does awesome work. And Gavino DiFalco. Now, they both host a podcast en français called EMFC Radio, which is a subscription based podcast. But we were taking a look at what was going on in the marketplace. And we realized that CF Montreal fans need an English podcast. That's number one. And they need a quality podcast talking CF Montreal. And I know we're going to give you that. Why? Because we're very passionate about the sport. We're very passionate about the team. We're very passionate about the club, the organization, and we're very passionate about the city. Uh, we do a lot of homework. We place a lot of calls, and it's not going to last long. It's probably going to last, you know, 15 to 20 minutes each episode, but it's going to be straight. It's going to be in your face. It's going to be bang on. It's going to be to the point, and I think you're really, really going to love it, and I know that over the last couple of weeks, and yes, we're going to have different collaborators And uh, you know what? If uh, there's something down Patrice Bernier's alley, we'll bring we'll bring on Patrice Bernier. And if there's something down John Limniatis's alley, 
we're going to bring on John Limniatis. And if there's something down Nick DeSantis's alley, we're going to bring on Nick DeSantis. And you know what? Uh, if we have a chance, we're going to talk to uh, President of CF Montreal, Gabriel Gervais. We're going to talk to Sporting Director Olivier Renard. We're going to talk to his assistant, Vasily Kremenzidis, who, by the way, I'd like to take this opportunity to send out my sincere sympathies to um, Vasily and his sister, his dad, Chris, the entire family, uh, because several days ago, Vasily Kremenzidis lost his mom. Uh, and uh, I went to the funeral home yesterday uh, to pay my respects, but I'd like to once again send all my sympathies here. And, um, and um, you know, I I'm sure if you reach out to uh, Vasily, uh, if you can, if you have his uh, contact information, I'm sure he'd be uh, very appreciative of you uh, sending out uh, a note as well. Uh, so we're going to get, uh, you know, uh, members of the team on, members of the organization on, at least uh, that's... Uh, what we want to do, we had a chance to talk to uh, President Gabriel Gervais about it. And the uh, Lord knows that they wouldn't mind someone else spreading the word. And uh, you know what? Lord knows that we could use the content. And uh, once again, this is our city. This is our team. And uh, we believe that uh, overall um, justice hasn't been done with the way the team has been covered over the years. Uh, not all of it's the media's fault and not all of it is their fault. I think everyone's going to have to put a little bit of water in their wine. And uh, I've had several conversations on this program and one as, uh, as, as late as, or as early as what, a couple of days ago, uh, with Stu Cowan and uh, Stu's opinion is that um, when they wrote about it in the Gazette, when they wrote about CF Montreal, it would get no clicks. Uh, it would get no views. And uh, he doesn't think too many people care. Uh, I respect his opinion. I don't share it. And I've said that many, many times. And I'm going to give you one example, and we're going to put this whole thing to end right now, okay? Jerry from Longueuil, well, actually two examples. Jerry from Longueuil called yesterday and said, Tony, I'm not going to sign up to uh, the MLS season pass on Apple uh, so that I could watch CF Montreal games. And I said, uh, oh, really? Why is that, Jerry? Uh, and he said, well, uh, there's been... Uh, so much turnover with the team. Uh, you know what? Uh, too many people are gone. I, I, I can't even follow anymore. And I, and I said, uh, really, Jerry? Eh? And I said, okay. I said, uh, let me just bring that up here. Hold on a second. I even wrote them down and I said, uh, all right, Jerry. Uh, Canadians made it to the Stanley Cup final two years ago. Less than two years later. Uh, Toffoli, Petrie, Tatar, Dano, Perry, Cock, and Yemi, Weber, Byron, Lekin, and Kulak, Sharat, Romanov, Stahl, Mete, Gustafson, Merrill, Frolik, Bergevin, Timmons, Mellenby, Julian, Kirk Muller, Stefan Waite, Dominic Ducharme, and Luke Richardson are gone, just to name a few. And by the way, so is equipment manager Pierre Gervais. I said, you still follow the Montreal Canadiens? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, Jerry. So now just tell me that the reason why you're not going to sign up is because you don't care and not because there's been turnover, because there's been more turnover with the Montreal Canadiens and you still follow. And he took a second and he said, all right, Tony, you're right. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, and I know I'm right. Uh, so now that discussion that we had, yes, a couple of days ago with Stu, I want to tell you this. I want to bring it up. I'm looking up on my phone here, okay? Um, that there's no clicks, there's no clicks, there's no clicks. This is what I tell you. This is what I've noticed. This is what my buddy Jeremy Filos has noticed, okay? When, when you end up being an insider for a certain team, the people that are going to follow you are going to be fans of that team, fans of that sport, all right? And they're going to go to you for content. And they might not go to someone else who's not a fan of the team or someone who's not as passionate about the sport or another website that probably doesn't cover it the same way, okay? In terms of clicks or no clicks or clicks or no clicks, Jeremy Filosa came out with a story yesterday at 2.14 p.m., Okay. So 24 and 8, 32 hours later, 32 hours later, that story on the fact that CF Montreal could actually be viable this year and they can make money off of his tweet has 42,700 views, 42,700 views in a story. Once again, a tweet that came out just over 32 hours ago in the last 40 hours, 48 hours, 50 hours. There's several articles that came out on the Montreal Canadiens 
that have 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, 20,000 views. A lot less views than that story. Yes, there are Montreal Canadian stories that have 50,000 views, 60,000 views, 80,000 views. There are. But if you come out with good content, you could get views for CF Montreal. And that story by Jeremy 32 hours ago proved it. And we're going to continue to bring you good stories. I think we're going to bring you a lot of scoops because I know we work very, very hard at it. So be along for the ride if you can. It's going to be a separate YouTube channel, okay? So it's not going to be on this same YouTube channel. There's going to be another YouTube channel. And you'd have to subscribe to that YouTube channel. And once again, it's absolutely free. And on Twitter, it is sick pod. CFMTL, and it's going to be another Twitter handle as well. So, once again, this is where the industry is going. I think we're ahead of the curve. It's streaming and it's on demand. You want a Canadians podcast? You have it here, Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. You want a CF Montreal podcast? You're going to have it a couple of times per week uploaded. You should get it afternoon. Uh, at the very latest, give or take, at around 5 p.m. on Mondays and on Thursdays. And if need be, we'll do even more than that. It's going to be short, it's going to be sweet, and it's going to be to the point. And I'm certain that you're going to love it. And that's going to be podcast number two for the SICK Podcast out of Montreal. Don't be surprised if it goes to podcast three and it goes to podcast four. By the way, speaking hockey and speaking NFL, the SICK Podcast is in eight different cities in North America. Within the next two weeks, it's going to be in 12 different cities in North America. What Agnello and Sammy have built out of their house on the West Island of Montreal is absolutely unbelievable. They are building a podcast empire out of their home with limited staff, family-run business, and I'm happy to do my part and contribute. It's pretty awesome. All right, okay, so congratulations to them. Uh, do we have Mapper? Yes or no? And Yellow and Sammy, why don't you come up here? Oh, okay, here we go. And Yellow and Sammy, come up. I want to talk to you guys. What's up, Tony? All right, okay. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be on in about 10 minutes. Oh, he'll be on in 10 minutes? Yep. Why, you talked to him already or what? Yeah, I just texted him a little while ago. Okay, because he, he I just noticed that he texted me and he asked me for the link, which I would imagine that you have sent to him already, but I am going to send to him right now. Okay, here we go. Um, how about um uh okay, how about um how about Chris the, the Chris uh, La Tornade is gonna join us today yeah, as well, correct? Right? Well, first if you want, he's there. Yeah, okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we do by the way? Uh, congratulations on everything. And, thank and you. by the way, and thank you for listening to me. Okay. Uh, in one regard, not, you know, you, you don't listen to me very often okay. because you're a lot smarter than I do, okay. but you, you know, I'm very passionate about talking CF Montreal and I've been talking to you guys about that for a while. And, uh, and you guys said, yeah, let's go for it. So thank you to you. Thank you to Sammy. Um, Jeremy Filosa and Gavino Di Falco are going to be, you know, joining me for the ride here. Uh, I'll be hosting, and they're going to be collaborators, uh, and uh, we're going to have a back and forth, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So it's cool. Thank you. Thank you. So you want Chris to go on? Going to 12 podcasts in the next couple of weeks, eh? Yeah, we're launching next week. We're launching Vegas. Memphis, Hold on a second. For those who are watching, why don't you tell them the eight cities where you're in right now? Obviously, Montreal's one of them. Toronto, Detroit, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Tennessee, Montreal, Las Vegas, Memphis, and New York. Wow. We're getting there. Wow. Oh, and we missed Cleveland. I forgot about Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, Montreal's our favorite one. You know that. So. Of course. Of course I do. And the beauty of all of this is that, um, a lot of people thought I was crazy to leave, uh, and, uh, where I was because I was there for so long. And why leave a big sports radio station to go do a little podcast? And uh, this podcast empire is on the verge of selling for anywhere between 50 to 100 million. And I negotiated 50%. It's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. You're the best. You know that? I love you guys, man. You're the best. 
Uh, we're having fun. That's what's important. We're having fun. We're we're having fun. And when I cash in the millions, it's going to be even a lot more fun. You're the best. Thank you, A. Um, why don't we do this? All kidding aside, Aniello and Sammy, once again, congratulations. Good for you guys, man. It's amazing what you guys have accomplished out of your home in Kirkland and a family-run business. It's unbelievable. You've become the envy of many. Um, often imitated, never duplicated. Uh, why don't we play a video? Because I think Chris Chris underwent some renovations or what? Yeah, so we'll put on Chris and he can explain what's going so on. So talk to Chris first and then we'll show the video. Uh, maybe the last 25 minutes of the show or whatever, we're going to bring you Marc-André Perrault. We're going to talk Montreal Canadiens hockey. Let's play the video. Hi, guys. It's Tornado Chris here. I'm just going to uh, take you on a little tour of my store today. We're presently at Spa La Tornade in Vaudreuil d'Orion. We have lots of memorabilia now in store. We have autograph frames, Crosby's. We have lots of Canadian stuff. We have the famous Funko Pops that everybody loves to collect. We have some baseball hats memorabilia. We have a whole collection of cards here. We have lots of golf and baseball and football, basketball. This is all our products here in house. We have our famous pillows up top there. Have a look, we have uh, down there, we have soccer cards. We have a lot of graded basketball cards in house. This is all new guys. Our store is getting bigger and bigger all the time. We have our cards that are on eBay. We have a nice little setup here. We have a TV with more memorabilia, more pillows, more hockey, all hockey. We have socks. We have lots and lots and lots of hockey cards. This is our hockey card section. We have boxes and boxes, anything you want, anything you need. We can even get you jerseys, Pokemon cards, anything you need in the memorabilia world. And you can visit us at www.spalatornade.com for any orders online. Thanks guys. All right, there you have it. Let's get to Chris Spar La Tornade. He's coming up. Six sports cards. Presented by Sports La Tornade. And welcome back. All right, there you have it. Uh, Spar La Tornade. Uh, once again, they are uh, presented by Sport La Tornade. Six sports cards. Uh, sports cards, collectibles, and more. Visit the store at One Avenue de la Fabrique in Vaudreuil, Dorion. And there he, uh, there he is, Chris. What's going on? Not too much. How are you? Very, very good. Very nice video showing us the new layout of the store. Thank, Thank you, you for that. Uh, are Are you at the store right now or no? I am. Yes, ah, I am. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, the card show in California. The last time we left off, weren't you on your way there? Yes, I was. So uh, last weekend I was in Ontario, California for the Burbank Card Show. Um, the Burbank Card Shop run by Rob uh, from, well, they're, they're originally from Burbank. It's not that far away, but uh, the it was uh, at the Ontario Convention Center in uh, California. So I was there for four days. Uh, very big card show, very nice card show. It's getting bigger every year. They... Uh, what, what I love about that is that it's a lot more basketball, football, soccer, and all but, I wouldn't say but hockey, but hockey is maybe about less than 5% of what's, what's in-house over there. So it's a bit different. And uh, I like to go down there and pick up a lot of stuff that you wouldn't generally get here. So it's a good trip to make. All right. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, so if you're at a card store, in California, I imagine the cards that carry the most value are cards of athletes who play for Los Angeles-based teams. Is that accurate or not? Uh, yeah, that is that is pretty accurate. I mean, a big card, like a big LeBron James or a Michael Jordan card, is going to be it's going to be the same price across the board. But you might see you might see a few more in in that city. So, uh, you know, having said that, like last week uh, or, you know, it's been what, two weeks now since LeBron uh, broke the record. So going to L.A., uh, having LeBron just broke the record, a lot of hype. So that was good for the city. All right. Uh, LeBron cards. 
Yes. What are we talking? Like I could imagine. Like how many LeBron cards are there? And when his rookie card came out, was there different companies that had his rookie card? And if so, which is the one that carries the most value? So there's there's um yeah there's different sets. So I would say Panini Prism is probably one of the higher ones. Where if you if you got his rookie card or an optic. There's, there's very high, there's very, there's even higher ends than that, but then they come with it. There's, there's sets now that come with a lock and key. Like uh, they're very, there's wow. boxes. Yeah. There's boxes that are, they only make a hundred boxes of that set. And, you know, it, it becomes really, really, uh, it can become really expensive. And then you can have your lower end ones too, that everyone can collect, get some LeBron James in his second, third, fourth year for cheaper five, six bucks. You can pick up nice ones. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a huge market. The rookie cards are obviously what's going to be worth more, but at the end of the day, uh, if you want to pick up some LeBron now that he, you know, he still has cards and all the sets that are coming out could mm -hmm. be base cards or inserts. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Probably three, four weeks ago, Wayne Gretzky said that, you know, the only one he thinks that can actually challenge Connor McDavid going forward is Jack Hughes. And you take a look at the progression, his career, the improvement every year, the way he plays. You know what? Uh, it's probably not a crazy thing to think about. I took a look at their stats the other day, and I think Kent, uh, Jack Hughes in his fourth season here, I think averages, or when he I did the calculations, I think he was like at 1.24, 1.25 a game. And Connor McDavid was slightly more, but he was more. And uh, when you looked at it from that respect, you know, Hughes in his fourth season compared to mm -hmm. McDavid in his fourth season, you could understand um, the discussion, if any. So my question to you is, with that in mind, how much of a great investment or not would Jack Hughes's Young Guns rookie card PSA 10 be? I think it's a great investment. It has already gone up. So people are already talking about it. People have already uh, you know, heard or uh, spoke of exactly what you were saying. Uh, people know the stats, people follow the trend. So his card has gone up in the last couple months. Uh, he is a great, great hockey player. I follow him a lot too. I, I hope that he can stay healthy. He has been in the last couple of years on and off health wise. Mm -hmm. So if he can stay healthy, he's definitely, well, uh, statistics are showing that he's up there. So his card could continually uh, climb. What are we talking about in terms of buying his uh, rookie card, Young Guns PSA 10 right now? Do you know off the top of your head? So I want to say two months, a month to two months ago, you could buy that PSA 10 for $300. And now you're looking at $400. You're looking at about $400 for the card. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. We uh, actually we we sold we sold the Jack Hughes PSA ten yesterday four hundred dollars. Ah, okay, all right, yeah. okay. Um, I still think it's uh, I still think it's a pretty good deal. I still think it's a pretty good deal. What is um? I've been told something's releasing tomorrow. What's releasing tomorrow? So this the moment the 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 most um, hyped box of the year is uh, is called the cup. Uh, we've meant it. We've mentioned it before. The cup is the most expensive box of the year it's the holy grail of the hockey card so everybody would love to open the cup not everybody can uh budget wise because it's so expensive but um upper deck has been behind in the production of their boxes so the actual 2020 2021 the cup releases tomorrow so they're you know two over two years behind wow if not, yeah they are but it's 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 the last product to release of that 2020, 2021, but yeah, it's coming out tomorrow. There's people that have pre-ordered already. The, some of these are mostly the more high end collectors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big product that's going to come out uh, tomorrow. All right. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions and then we'll let you go. And thanks for your time. Number one is, so seeing as you know what i i uh i watched the the bus go by every single time here and i, I would i never hopped on when it was time if i want to get on the bus here for connor bedard's rookie cards going forward what's the timeline here what am i looking at when when are these cards obviously he needs to get drafted first i think right or when are these cards coming out okay so if you wanted to get on the connor bedard train right away 
there is a set i actually it released two weeks ago i have the set right here this is the team canada juniors wow so this is the box here he he does have cards in there you can get signed connor bedards you can get numbered number to 75 we had a kid in here uh this week who pulled a uh, connor bedard card number to 75 it's a 500 dollars card it's a junior's card wow uh, yeah 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 so the train is there you got to get on now so are uh, there more like 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 he bought a, a pack out of a box or whatever like and he got it like if i come in and buy a couple of packs what are the chances of uh well we we uh we sell them by the box and we also sell them by the pack so he ca he came in and just bought one pack and he got really lucky um that connor bedardo to 75 is probably not something you'll see in 12 boxes probably um but he got lucky he got a pack that uh had a bedard in it you can get you can get there's bedards in there that are are five to ten dollars too but some of the numbered ones or if you get one of the auto patches that that are signed that's that's the first look at the Connor Bedard. And then you're gonna want to you're gonna want to jump on board when series one comes out and Connor Bedard is in the series one, which will be next November. So once he's drafted, uh, you know, gets his team and, and makes makes the team and probably will start the season. And normally the, the first overall players start the season. Then he'll be in series one, and that's where you wanna you wanna get on it early. Is gonna be in in November. Chris, pretty cool. If uh, someone drops by to see you uh, over the next couple of days, or on the weekend at the store, uh, once again, what are you uh, what are you promoting? What is uh, the thing that people should have their eyes out on? So I'm promoting right now. The, so the Team Canada, we're still promoting the. Uh, a little bit better budget we have the synergy box that came out last week so that yeah. one's pretty that one's pretty cool i've got some cards here to show off this is what the cup that comes out tomorrow you're looking at big cards like this this is a malkin uh lemieux signed i actually left the price on it there for you wow this this is what a rookie card might look like so you have a patch and an autograph this is a ryan paling so this would be from the 2019-20, the cup. Well, you know, so you went from a car that goes for a Gino to a Ryan Paling rookie card that goes for 10 cents. Well, not 10 cents, but yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the cards are The cards are thicker. They're not the, your, your average thin cards. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm promoting this week. There is also Topps Series 1 baseball that came out very hot. People are pull pulling a lot of nice stuff out of the uh, Topps Series 1 baseball also. Pretty cool. Chris Spar La Tornade, thanks for joining me, man. Have a good night, buddy. Thank you. All right, there you have it. Now we bring in our guy to talk Montreal Canadiens hockey from TV Spar, Mac Andre Perrault. What's going on, Doc? Philadelphia, living the dream. You know what we need? Yeah. Tony Marinero card. Uh yeah, that, that won't be worth anything. Maybe in hopefully one day it will. Hey, listen, when did you arrive in Philly? Uh this morning. Did you have a Philly cheesesteak yet? I did. It, wow. it, it was good. I, I I shouldn't have had, but I did. Okay. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Not that more than good. that? No, 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 no. You're not no, a no, big no. fan or? Yeah, it's I mean, well, one is enough, right? I'll yeah, have my no. second one tomorrow. So, yeah. Okay. Out of all the cities uh yeah. around the National Hockey League, the one spot that you circle on your calendar because you're like, I can't wait for that trip because I want to go eat at that place and order that. Which one I, is it? I'm I'm not a big eater, so I I I don't like make my calendar thinking about where I'm gonna eat. But Nashville is something else, but not for eating, just for you know. Everyone, you know, Stu loves Nashville. You love Nashville. Everyone talks to me about Nashville. Agnello and Sammy. Stu is my Stu is my dad on the beat. Yeah, Agnello and Sammy are big Tennessee Titan fans, and they've been to Nashville to watch some Titans games. They were actually it, uh, they were actually it's the uh, best. Uh, they were they were on the sidelines actually, so they were taken really? care of by the Tennessee Titans. Oh yeah, yeah, they took care of them. They got like the five star treatment when they went. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, of you. And, no, no, no. The, the, the just, uh, you know, who doesn't love Sammy? You know what I mean? And uh, and Sammy's got pull everywhere. And um, they uh, they they just 
they talk about Nashville all the time. Like they Nashville is Nashville. the best. I mean, you have so many cities that did not understand that you need to have the rink downtown. So you have the bridge Bridgestone Arena. Yeah. Then you take just by the corner, you you know, you make it right, and there's so many bars that all the bands are good, beer is good, and then if you keep walking for like I don't know five ten minutes, you see the football stadium. It's the best place oh, if you want to go with your buddies, have a weekend sports beer weekend. It's the best like by far. So, wow, that's 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 amazing. Good, I'm happy to hear it. Hey, yeah. uh, Jean Charles and I had had quite the discussion yes uh, earlier tonight. Did you? Did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I I told him that you know because uh, Anthony Martino, yep, who does a real good job for TVS he's Spot. I, I I think he's very real, good. Uh, you yep. know, at one point I would have called him up and coming, but I think it's safe to say that he's arrived. Uh, he's oh. very he's very very good at what he does. Very yep. very good. Yeah, thanks for uh, for mentioning it. In, in my Please, opinion, or, in, yeah. in my opinion, very underrated, by the way. And I say that very because I think a lot more people should be talking about him for the work that he does. Uh, Rising star. Yeah, I think so. I uh, yeah, I really believe that. And um, yeah, he does some great features. And uh, he went to talk to Connor Bedard and the Bedard family. And I'm actually uh, with the camera guy here in Philadelphia that went with him, and he said pretty that. much the same thing. He's 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 really good and. It's great stuff. Did great stuff with Lane Hudson, yeah, uh, Farrell, and he did the same with Connor Logan Mayu. Uh, yeah, Logan Mayu. Yeah, it's 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 a must. So yeah, yeah, he's very good. Um, what did your camera person say about uh, Connor Bedard? Blown away or not? Because uh, what you know, great guy, great guy, and you know, they did an interview with his mom. Yeah, great person. So y- you understand when you see the parents. You know, it- it's obvious, but when you see the parents of a person, you have a good idea of how this person is and uh, they yeah. did an interview with uh with his mom great person she was very friendly very open and so uh, good yeah. experience and yeah. look i'm not going to tell you everything uh, for all of you watching what came up in the interview because i'd love for you to be able to go to tv spot and give it a watch or but yeah. but i will i will tell you about a couple of things and just leave it at a couple um his mom says that ever since the world juniors, the amount of people that are like just outside their house to get a glimpse of Connor is a incredible. And yeah. number two, uh, Connor Bedard, the player that he most looks up to is Sidney Crosby. And he yeah. watches Crosby, not only the way he plays, but he especially watches him the way he conducts himself. Yeah. Uh, interviews, and interviews, and pregame interviews, postgame interviews, and I think we saw a little bit of Crosby in him when they won the gold medal at the World Juniors, right? And they just asked him about, you know, how do you feel about being Canada's all-time leading goal scorer and point getter at the World Juniors at such a young age with still eligibility for two World Juniors yeah. to go? And he said, it's not about me. Let's just talk yeah. about this team and let's talk about this group of guys. And I mean, he, he doesn't sit in a boring way like we see, like actual stars in the NHL doing it. Sidney Crosby... He's a beast and he is not boring. And he, I remember one time I was in Pittsburgh and every time you go in Pittsburgh locker room, you have Sidney Crosby, like at the very end of, of, of the dressing room. And he has his like old cap that must smell like, like crap because it's old and he sits normally guys stand up for the interviews, but there's so many people he sits, you have like, 20 15 20 cameras mm-hmm. uh, uh, journalists you know so anyways and the interview is over and i i don't even remember what was my question i'm like i said I, I have one more if you don't mind so everybody left left and i asked the question it was about a stick or something and he takes 15 minutes just to chat talk to well he answered obviously the question i asked and then he start started chatting about Quebec, French, and blah, blah, blah. And after 15 minutes, I'm like, hey, Sid, I, I mean, I didn't want to take that much of your time. So, no, I, I, I don't mind. Just talking about hockey is fun. So I, I did spend 15 wow. minutes with him, just, you know, just a casual conversation with one of the greatest. So you don't see that. I mean, no. he, this guy, he's a star. So, 
And you, and no offense to Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, or it's not the same. Sidney Crosby, he's right there. He's the closest so, to Gretzky in that respect. I mean, I, I obviously didn't cover Gretzky, but I, I, yeah. I he's he's such a nice person. So if Connor Bedard yeah. is looking at him and yeah. you know he's like, I, I want to be like him, the NHL should thank every god that yeah. people think exists and yeah. you know so anyways it, it, it good for him good for hockey good for hockey yeah. because they really need a star that have a nice personality i'll uh i'll um i'll never mention and that's one of the things i, I i'm is very important to me is uh i'll never go into detail about you know what happens at night uh you know when uh, when it's a non-hockey night uh, and, uh, and I think it's, 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 you know, I think we have to be like that if we want to last and we want to have the respect, but I'm, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say this all-star weekend in Montreal. Okay. The day before the skills competition, I make my way out to an establishment, which I, someone whispered in my ear where the players were going to be hanging With out. Alcohol involved. Yes. Okay. So, but I'm not, I'm not going to go there. Right. But the, what I'm saying is. I, I know someone whispered in my ear where the players were going to be that night, the night before the skills competition. So I said, let me go there. Who knows? Start talking to one or two guys, a little bit of networking, get a number or two. And, and that's obviously that's the way we make sources in the business, right? Usually doesn't happen at the club, but Hey, you know what? If we're having a drink together, to whatever, do what you got to do, let's do what you got to do. So anyway, I make my way there. And all I'm going to say is, is that, Everyone really enjoyed Montreal and everything it had to offer that night. Enjoyed it big time. Sidney Crosby at a table. Um, didn't move from that table all night. And like, this guy is just, it, he conducted himself so professionally yeah it's almost like he knew that people were watching and you know what once people again are. everyone yeah everyone enjoyed montreal and he was like just having a conversation and uh and uh you know he there was there was no there was no parting it up there it's like and then you see the career that he's had and the way he's played and it just it all makes sense right i mean this is this is the discipline. This is well, what it is. And I, mean, I understood that night that this guy's career was, it was going to work out. It was going to be amazing. Even right now, if you have one player you have to pick for game seven, it's he's going to be in the mix for yeah. sure. Him and Patrice <laughs> Bergeron. For sure. So yeah. he, he, even, so he's, he's a great, uh, really great human being. I mean, great person. And you talked about, well, uh connor's uh connor Bedard's mom yeah said that people are you know gathering around the house yeah jean gabriel Pajot, when he was playing for the hall olympics it wow, was the same a, there's a name, he was yeah. living like yeah he was living like like few blocks from from robert gertin back in the days yeah and his parents they i mean they are the best so like great people oh, and really? they were like hey there's people praying on our porch yeah <laughs> so yeah like hockey fans can can be pretty intense sometimes so yeah yeah so not not only Connor Bedard so I just uh, yeah, I thought it was a funny story that is uh that is a pretty amazing story uh really so anyway that was uh my uh Sidney Crosby story um yeah. he, you know he used to play obviously with the uh, Cienic de Rimouski and uh yeah, Gilles yeah. Was coaching there, and uh, you know he was a he was a friend of mine. And I remember calling Guy every now and then and saying, "Guy, you know, like, uh, talk to me about this Crosby kid. Is this guy like is the all the hype that I'm hearing? Is this guy the real deal?" And he's and he told me a couple of stories. One story that he told me was, <clears throat> he said, "Tony, like in terms of eating, like he eats so clean, like like sugar does not enter this man's body, with the exception of he loved those um, those uh, what are they? They're um, I don't know if they're peanuts or almonds, but they're like yogurt coated. You know the white ones. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yogurt coated, you know, almonds or whatever they are, or yogurt coated peanuts. I don't know what they are. He says he you love those, but like that would be like the worst thing that he would eat. And then he recalled this, you know, he told me a story of like, you know, first one on the ice before practice, practice harder than anyone else during practice, last one on the off the ice after practice. And Guy used to drive him, you know, to his apartment uh after practice. And at one point, you know, he saw he saw some kids at the rink in the park and whatever, and they were playing. And he told Guy to stop, and he grabbed this hockey stick. And he went out, and he stayed about an hour to play hockey with the kids. And then we heard the story, of course. I don't know if it was in Trombla or wherever it was. Yeah, it was in Trombla, yeah. It was in Trombla a couple of years yeah. ago. There's one There's one young gentleman who's on the ice, and uh, who shows up to, 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 to skate? It's Sidney Crosby. And, uh, you know, he ends up playing a game of one-on-one and skating and passing the puck around with Sidney Crosby. It's like stuff of uh, – it's Can like a movie. Believe? It's like it's like a movie. It's really amazing. Hey, yeah. um, I want to talk uh, Habs with you because I was talking about you know talking. Hey, just a stuff. second, Tony. Yeah, La Beta TB is this is, is this new? Yes, yes. We introduced it last week. It's a uh, it's a microbrewery. They've yeah. won. They've yeah. They've won. Uh, they've won a bunch of uh, international awards. Does where are they from? Awards. Uh, it, it, you know what? I'd have to find out. Hold on a second. Hold on. Because Abit at CB, it's it's a song for my uh, my Abit CB team is coming. So I, I was. Wondering. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, Abit at CB. I mean, the, the, everybody Google this song and you know just think of me while you're listening. It, okay. It, 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 it's I, nice. l- listen, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm 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 I think it's safe to say that it's from La Province de so, Quebec, but I'm wondering. Yeah. So, sorry, I I, I caught you flat. flat no, no, no. It's fine. It's uh. This one here is a 5.2% alcohol, by the way. They had another label the other day, right which now. I had, which had a 5% alcohol. Uh, but I'll try and find out exactly um, where it's brewed. And maybe, uh, hold on a second. Uh, anyway, if you come from La Bitsibi Teams Coming, you've heard that you've heard La Bitsibi so, so many times. So I, 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 I couldn't recall seeing it in the sponsor. So, so made in Quebec, and it looks like. It, I could be wrong, but it looks like it's brewed in Laval. All right. Okay. Well, that's have what to, I uh, see here. And if, if that information okay. is not accurate, I'll get you the right information at one point. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, um, Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Sammy says that he's pretty sure, by the way, that the song is about the beer. Okay. okay. Um, Montreal Canadiens. Yep. So, you know, I've been talking about, so now Anthony Martineau comes in, does the feature with Connor Bedard, starts talking to Jean Chal about him. The Canadians right now today have like a 7.5% chance of winning the lottery. But if, oh, they yeah. lost, but if they would have lost more games, they would have had more of a chance, right? And yeah. I said to Jean Chal, I said, you know, Jean Chal, that's the thing that bothers me. And he says, Tony, players don't tank. And I said, Jean Chal, I know they don't tank. You don't have to tell me that. But, but, you know, if Marty St. Louis plays some of his better players less, and some of his less good players more, logic dictates that the Canadians are going to end up losing more games than they're going to win. So case in point, for example, one of the things that had upset me at one point is I thought that Nick Suzuki played way too much. So Nick Suzuki is top five most used players, most ice time in the league, top five. McDavid and Dreisaitl, McKinnon and Rantanen, Suzuki. Tied with Lekkinen, by the way, who plays on a line with McKinnon and Rantanen. And th- there was a time, I think it was in December, Suzuki was number one. Wow. Like 10, 10 seconds more than McDavid. I I, I did something, uh, which you say, I, I, I think it was in December. Yeah. But there was a, a time, a, a span, you say that? A span? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Suzuki was number one in like 10 seconds over. And that, it, it, it was a problem because you could see that it was just too many minutes but what are the options like what are the options right now they're including joel armia there's 11 regular missing 11 that's a lot i mean that is a lot so marty saying we doesn't have any choice uh, you, you need suzuki on the power play on the pk for important face-offs and at the end of the game when you're on power plays so he, do, he just doesn't have choice. So right now, that's the big problem. But it, it's but, funny you're talking about... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, but, you know, uh, and by the way, uh, brewed at the Geloso, uh, Le Groupe Geloso on Boulevard Le Mans in Laval. 
All right. So to answer your question, that's where La Bete TB is. Uh, okay. Is good. Okay. But I, I just I want to tell you that um, that okay. So the last two games, he's averaged eighteen and a half minutes. The previous better. five games before that, he averaged over five minutes more than that. And this is all I'm getting at is I love Suzuki. I know you love Suzuki. Obviously, Marty St. Louis loves Suzuki, and I know they're better with Suzuki. But two things. A, they're in a rebuild. You don't have to play him that much. Number two, I take a look at Suzuki's frame, his build, his size, and I believe that playing him that much, top five in the league, is too much. Yeah, I'll, and and I'll he'll be a, a more effective player, I think, if you can get him under 20. It's too much. Like he played like 23, 24. And I, I remember getting a call from a coach like saying, I think it was a minute, 10 seconds average per shift. Mm -hmm. It was just too much. But just be careful because when he take his equipment off, you should see like the legs and the, the butt. Like he's a horse, like lower body. He's a horse, but it's just too many minutes uh but just doesn't have a choice i i just want to add something because you, you you said you talked about tanking and you can't ask players to tank and i was uh talking about that would you say that are you okay oh you're so i mean Ladies. like people Ladies. are Ladies. hold on a second people are going to bed Ladies. soon there's something called nightmares look okay? at this this is all muscle. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Muscle. Look at that. Huh? And by the way, not a hair. Look. You won't find the hair. Not a hair. Not a hair on my fingers. Not a hair that on is... my arms. Not a hair on my chest. It's only tough on my face. Nightmares. And on my head. I I I'm 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 shocked. Those but, are, those are, listen, those are nice I'll, legs, man. I'll pretend connection was bad and I didn't see those. Nothing. Those, listen, say what you want. I know nice legs when I see it. I have a stomach, yes, but my <laughs> legs, my you legs are absolutely, my legs are amazing. It's I got not beautiful a stomach, it, it's just a love cushion. Okay? I got, not, not all guys have very nice legs. I got to tell you, I have beautiful legs. Some of my best friends, I've seen better legs on a pool table. My legs, unbelievable. And I, I, I'm going to take notes. Okay. Yeah. But let's talk about tanking now. What do you think about the shave, though? What do you think about the shave? Huh? It's, it's awesome. It, how it many, gives how me many, the chills. How many guys do you know shave their entire body twice a uh, day? It, it, it's not the type of conversation normally I have. No, but no, but friends. I I know, but okay. Last, how many guys you know shave their body twice a week? You're looking at them. I mean, one, I guess. Mister Clean, that's me. Okay, you were saying. <laughs> no, I know you want to talk abs. You were saying. Uh, I was talking uh, tanking because yeah. you talked about tanking Connor Bedar, and there's yeah. no such thing as tanking on the ice. We saw Montreal last night. Uh, like the guys were going crazy when Kovacevic scored, when Matheson scored, they want to win. Have you seen Patrick Kane when he, of course, they want to win? Of course, it, nobody does. It, it was, it was a fake goal, and everybody was like, he was winning the Stanley Cup. Have you seen, did you watch Nashville against Vancouver last night? You know what? I, I mean, did not, I did not. You did, okay. Oh, it, well, I think I was uh, on the, I think I was on the air with the podcast, right? Oh, probably yes. I yeah. mean, if you're a hockey fan, no matter what team you're cheering for, this game is exactly what hockey is about. Okay, yeah. so it's it's four to Nashville. I think it's one o three to play. Vancouver scores, and they mm -hmm. don't need points. They they actually don't want points upstairs because you know the, the percentage. So it's four three. Fifteen seconds left. Bang! They score another another goal. Kuz, Kuznetkov, and like all the guys are, it's like they won the Stanley Cup. Wow! Don't don't talk about tanking like on the ice again. It it, it, it is not happening. And I just thought it was it was just beautiful to see to see that. 
Montreal, Chicago, Vancouver, there's no such thing as thinking. And that was great. Anyways, no, but, talk about the know, likes again. You remember what Kent Hughes said, right? Uh, we got to tread very carefully. He said something to the uh, something that sounded like, you know, too many, too many losses is not good. Cousin, Cousin and, cool. I, I don't and, know why I had a brain yeah, cramp. And, and too many losses is not good, and too many wins is not good either. I mean, Kent Hughes is the one who said that, right? And depending you know, on how you win, it's it's important. Depending yeah. if you win by cheating or whatever, it it's not good. But it's not happening right now. Hey, uh, you know, I'll I'll leave you with this. So appreciate your time, by the way, because I know there's so many things to do in Philadelphia. So thanks for making time for me tonight and respecting a lot your... of people to meet, right? Yeah, thank you, thank you for respecting. Uh, you know, our uh, our visit here on Wednesday nights. Uh, I know that people really appreciate. I'm having you. fun. I'm having thank fun you. with good, you, good. especially well, that... when you talk about your legs and your chest. And... Yeah, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back to the legs and the chest because no, I, I do think, it. Uh, yeah, um... <laughs> you're risking threat chat, threat on the threats on the chat <laughs> the people are going nuts on me in the chat I, listen what what kind of guys you know somebody tech, uh, wrote what kind of guys shave their legs me i shave my legs i sh i shave my legs i well, i trim my legs no actually i shave my legs i trim first and if i don't get every hair then i'll shave after i trim my arms i trim my hands i trim my chest i i have like uh i don't know I, it's, it's let's like, let's, let's I just, stop there <laughs> yeah i don't i don't i don't like body hair i just it's several years now i just don't i try and get rid of as much as i can um rafael rv pinard i'm man. shocked that you know certain websites and i heard i hear certain people there are some that aren't sure that he's going to be on this team next year am i am i hearing this right like I would be shocked if he doesn't start the season in Montreal next year. I would be shocked. I mean, what 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 do you need more? What? I mean, the guy, I mean, he's going to get a contract. That's he's going to get a one-way contract, good yeah. raise. Yeah. So that that's uh, right there you you have a sign that he's going to but he's not the type of person who's going to sit on his contract. He is such a great person. And he's a hard worker. Rafael Arvipinal, you don't need to tell him, you know, hey, let, let, you know, let's, he, he's always going to work. He's always going to go in the corner, no matter who's behind, no matter if he's going to hit, he's going to be hit or not. He is the real deal. I'm not saying that he's a first liner. Do you say that? A first liner? Yeah. 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 I mean, he is not. That's that. But, we see that he can fix a problem if there is one. So Rafael Arvipinal, best best case scenario in a winning hockey team is going to be on the third line. And I'm it, it's not an insult to him because he's going to give you some great minutes to yeah. protect the lead on the on the PK. And he shows that he can play on the first line, he can play on the power play, and he can play in the last minute when you need a goal so this guy he is the real deal yeah and he, he's not uh, what is it it's like nine points in 13 game it, it, it it's not gonna last it, and let's just be honest and you know logical here it's not gonna last that pace but this guy he's an nhl or like laval it's in the past it, yeah it's over for him it, it's it's not gonna happen again it, yeah. it, you know if it does yeah. it's his fault and it's not going to happen. A shout out to Playground over 600 machines, poker tournaments, and Playground casino games, daily promotions, and unmatched customer service. Why go anywhere else? Located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. Mac Andre Perot is in Philadelphia. The Canadians visit the Flyers on Friday night. Uh, yeah. So, what are you going to do all day tomorrow? Uh, practice at yeah. 12 30. So, we're going to see what kind of inconfort did yeah. Armia suffer. Is yeah. it the discomfort? Discomfort. Fire discomfort. Discomfort. Yeah, discomfort. Yeah. Are you going to go but, take a picture with the Rocky statue? Of course. I'm going to yeah. send it to you. Yeah. Have you taken a picture with the Rocky statue already? Not yet. Liberty Bell and everything. Oh, really? It, it, it's it's a nice city to you know visit. Yeah. Come with the family. Better than New York. You remember what he used so to know. do before every fight, eh? Uh, Vaseline. Uh, no. Well, the, yes. Sh shave yeah. shave his legs. Uh, no, but. Uh, yeah, I don't and, know. and and Vaseline, you said. <laughs> I don't know on, on his face, right? I mean, we gotta okay. 
No, but before every fight, you know what he did, right? You know Absolutely. Shave his legs. He used to go see Father Carmine. You remember in the movie? Ooh. He used to go yeah, by yeah. the church. And yeah, he used to say, guy. yo, Father Carmine. Uh, Father Carmine. The, the mouth is too straight. And then and then he would say, hey, Rocky, quando vai fare la lotta? Yeah, I'm just on my way to the ring now, you know, Father, but I'm a little bit nervous, and uh, maybe I was thinking uh, if you can uh, say a prayer for me. Uh, ben, in the name of the Padre, Filho, Spirito Santo, e que sia. And then after he knocked out Tommy the Duke Morrison, remember Tommy the Machine Gun in Rocky Five, which I thought was the worst Rockies out of all of them. I'm a big Rocky fan, Isn't but I didn't three? like Rocky. Four? Five was the worst. I thought five was the worst. Five was in it with the Russian guy. No, the Russian was uh, Rocky Four. Okay, okay. Five Russian. was versus uh, Tommy oh, Morrison, yeah, yeah. Tommy Machine Gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah where yeah, they were was... fighting in the street. Yeah. And then no, after, and good. after he put him down. Father Kaimai came out and said, Rocky, that's an abata. Yeah. Anyway, I'm a big Rocky fan, as you can see. All right, buddy. Imitation is awesome. It's, it's, I mean, I, I could think it's, it's Rocky in front of me. Thanks for taking the time, man. Have fun in Philadelphia. Mapper, See everybody. What a guy. Thanks Tony, for having get a one star review for talking about his legs. Hey, I shaved them. Give me a five star review, a one five star review if they would have been full of hair. Shave the way they are. <laughs> At the very least, it's going to get me an endorsement contract or a sponsorship with laser hair removal, I would hope. Merci, <laughs> bonne soirée. Mac André hey, Perot. Bye -bye. hey, leave us a five-star review on Google, Apple, and Spotify. And if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitter, share it with your friends. Hit the like button and message SICK, S-I-C-K. It is the SICK Podcast. I'm Marinaro. We're talking Habs tomorrow night, same time, same place. On Thursday night, who's going to be on tomorrow? I have absolutely no idea, but I'm sure I'll think of somebody the way I always do, and I always think of you. I love you, Montreal. I love you, Habs fans. I love you, sick community. I love you, sick army. I love you, Agnello. I love you, Sammy. On to 12 podcasts by next week. A CF Montreal podcast starting tomorrow on a different YouTube channel and, of course, a different Twitter page. And on Instagram, different everything, different everything, different everything. These guys are the best. One day they're going to sell, and they're going to sell big. And I'm finally going to have made it. sha la 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 I love you, Agnello. I love you, Sammy. I love you, Sick Army. Have a great night. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you. 